Hello everyone, today we will be talking about a very important consequence of diabetes, which is diabetic nephropathy. It could be divided into three categories under pathological type. So the first one, nodular glomerular sclerosis. The second one is diffuse glomerular sclerosis. And the third one is isolated glomerular basement membrane thickening. So what do we see in nodular glomerular sclerosis? So we see a um, highly deposition in one area of glomerulus. And we can also call that kimmel steel wilson uh, nodule. So let's look at what it looks like. So this uh, over here is a histological uh, slide. And we see over here the kimmel steel wilson lesion or nodule. So it will look right over here. This is the hyaline deposition and it gives the pinkish hue because hyaline is usually pink. Now the question is, why is there the deposition of hyaline in your um, glomerulus? This is because uh, the non-enzymatic uh, glycosylation of protein cause a destruction and damage to the matrix and that's why hyaline recruits to fix it but then it gets deposited and it causes further problem down the road. And this is known as, this feature is called the nodular glomerulosclerosis. Now over here we see a picture of diffuse glomerulosclerosis in diabetic patients. Now moving on to the next aspect of uh, diabetes, which is microalbuminuria over proteinuria. So, so what actually is microalbuminuria? Like the name suggests, there's going to be small quantities of protein in the urine. And what is that quantity? So like over here, looking at the quick hit, it's 30 to 300 milligram per day. So if this is in your urine, you have microalbuminuria. And we can also measure microalbuminuria by doing an albumin creatinine ratio, which should be of 0 0.02 to 0 0.20. This is actually a very high yield um, point to remember because there was a question usually they tested on what to do when a patient comes in with diabetic nephropathy. The first thing again you do is you check for microalbuminuria. How do you check for microalbuminuria? You check their albumin and creatinine ratio. So albumin over creatinine, it should be 0 0.02 to 0 0.20. Now uh, coming to the next microalbuminuria can actually be reversed so that's the good news so if you have microalbuminuria it can be reversed by the glycemic control we will uh, focus on this um, flowchart over here and this is the progression in uh, diabetic nephropathy so first what happens first there will be hyperglycemia due to diabetes or maybe poor control of glycemic index because of hyperglycemia, there could be increased GFR. As we know, there would be hyaline depositions because of the mesangial matrix getting destructed uh, again due to glycosylated proteins. Now, when you have increased GFR, there will be uh, these little, little proteins trying to escape out, and that's called microalbuminuria. And like I said earlier, if you have microalbuminuria, this can be reversed if you uh, manage to have a strict glycemic control. But once you progress to proteinuria, now this becomes irreversible. Once you have proteinuria, glycemic control won't do anything. Now you have to focus on hypertension and controlling hypertension. Very, very, very high yield. Once microalbuminuria progresses to proteinuria, it's no more about um, glycemic control. It's more about decreasing that hypertension. And that's where ACE inhibitor, ARBs, come into play. By decreasing intraglomerular hypertension, they actually reduce the chance of diabetic nephropathy. Um, so that's extremely important. So proteinuria, again, will decrease GFR, and that will cause end-stage renal failure or disease. Now, let's test ourselves. Let's see if we can really apply whatever knowledge we gained in this question. So reading the question, a 60-year-old man comes to the physician's office after experiencing edema of his face and ankles two weeks 
he has no chest pain or breathlessness. For the 15 years, the patient has had diabetes mellitus, which is managed with exercise, dietary modification, and gliburide. His glycosylated hemoglobin level a month ago was 6.9%. Temperature is fine. Blood pressure is 146 over 87. Pulse is 75. Respirations are fine. Examination is unremarkable, except for the bilateral pitting edema. So there are values given over here. And we concentrate on um, seeing sodium, that's fine. Potassium is fine. Bicarb is fine. Blood glucose is 120, so he's good. He's controlling it well. Our uh, BUN is 37. Serum creatinine 2.4. Cholesterol 300. Creatinine is high. Now, the patient's uh, EKG is normal. Uh, since he had pitting uh, edema, we looked at the EKG. It's all normal. Here and but your protein, look at the protein, it's just very high. Three thousand seven hundred milligram per twenty-four hours. Now recalling back, we knew that microalbuminuria was only thirty to three hundred milligram per day. And look at this, it's three thousand seven hundred milligram per uh, per twenty-four hour. So if this question was presented to you, even without looking through all the information, if you just looked at the last line saying 3,700 milligram per uh, 24 hour, you knew that this was proteinuria and it has crossed that star. It cannot be reversed by your intensive glycemic control. That is gone. That's out. And the only thing that can prevent um, the nephropathy going towards ESRD is your control of hypertension. And what controls hypertension? A's and ARBs. So the answer obviously is going to be intensive blood pressure control. See how that small uh, information was translated into such a huge question. So it's very important to know once you cross microalbuminuria and you come towards proteinuria, there's no going back unfortunately. And the only thing that can control uh, your nephropathy going towards ESRD is control of your blood pressure. I hope that cleared a lot of questions and confusions about diabetic nephropathy. Thank you again so much for listening to the lecture. And if there are any questions, comments, suggestions, please do leave them below and I'll be more than happy to help you. Thank you again.